to Between the Roles, our Murder Hobo Inc. attempt at a somewhat legitimate talk show. Uh, my name is Carol. Uh, if you watch the campaign, I'm on the campaign. I'm also a commissioned mini painter. It's a longtime gamer, sometime GM, and maybe I'll be back on here uh, to get all the housekeeping done. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank our sponsor. We have a sponsor. Holy mackerel. Who would have thought we would have a sponsor? Hey, uh, hey, Kyle. Uh, Who's our sponsor? Uh, Don Julio. <laughs> Don Julio, it's delicious. <laughs> uh, Don Julio. By the way, by the way, his uh, his name tag right now is Bearded Office James. So he's just being Kyle. So I want to thank our sponsor. Oh, I'm being bearded Oddfish Games, Carol. Hence why it's the name. <laughs> that is so Kyle. That is just so, so Kyle. Kyle. That's so Kyle. <laughs> I don't know how the rest of the theme song goes. I have no idea. <laughs> Already. So I want to thank our sponsor, Oddfish Games, who make Adventure Sense, which is a line of scented. I don't know, little beads and such uh, to make your home smell like, let's see, I, I've copied down a few of the scents. Uh, do you want it, your home smell like an alchemy lab? They've got that. They've got one for, uh, uh, oh God, I can't even read my friggin' writing. <laughs> How about a moldy crypt? That sounds, mm. uh, let's see, I know there was ice castle. It's just like digging up your own grave and just shoving your nose right into the chest of dead old grandma. Smells just like it. God, you really don't want to know what that smells like, man. <laughs> how, about, how about a welcoming in? That would be a good one. Um, they have so many different that we I was looking, they have a huge range of scents. And, and to me at to least me, fifty-seven. If you're, running, if you're running a game and you're in a moldy crypt, actually, that would be the time to break it out. The one that oh, we've been be cool, doing, actually. Putrid atmospheric scent. sense that would be really cool what's that it, like atmospheric sense like if um who's that girl um um was it deborah wool that that did deborah all Ann Wall. Uh, yeah, deborah yeah. yeah that did uh that did the different things in different settings and such as that if you could mm -hmm. find scents that actually match the setting where you were at that would be super cool hey that you know where be. you can find scents that could match those settings where is that Oddfish Games Adventure Sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, as okay, that's enough. To talk about this all night. This is I just the beginning. This is just We're the never done. Getting. <laughs> all right. So, of course, as for us, uh, follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter. Uh, check out our YouTube archives for any of the old episodes or old between the roles uh, that you might want to watch. Uh, we have a Discord channel, which I'm sure is somewhere on the screen here. And of course, we have t-shirts and all sorts of things you want to debate. Frank's favorite thing is our shower curtain. Visit our shop. We all such a good, Frank keeps saying it's crap, but it's not. It's really good stuff. Uh, so, and without further ado, let me uh, have the cast introduce themselves. I will Shut up, Frank. I don't know if people could hear that, but hey. <laughs> I not myself. Well, I'm talking to myself That's because so I'm the only viewer. <laughs> oh, okay, Cam, but. <laughs> Such a troublemaker. Yeah, see, what, I'm talking basically to one person, probably Frank right now, and you guys. <laughs> so. Uh, all right, so let's go around the horn here. Uh, let's see. I will start with Scott. Go to introduce yourself. Say a little about yourself. Hi, uh, my name is Scott. I am a uh, DM and sometimes cast member slash player, sometimes slash DM. Um, been playing for a long time and uh, always happy to join because I've been a little bit more intermittent lately, uh, you know, jobs and works and such as that, but uh, always glad to rejoin and uh, talk about things that I know a whole lot about because I love the sound of my voice. <laughs> he does have a really good voice, doesn't he? You have a voice for radio. Uh, and we are very glad to have you have you on tonight. It's 
it's always it's always cool when you can join us and i get it i believe me i get it things are just crazy right now all right how about a uh, david david you're next all right i'm david i'm uh yeah <laughs> the murder hobo guest that never went away <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm also a cast member of the Cacophony Adventures here. I play Zadar. So, uh, and that's about it. I'm budding writer, uh, trying to write, trying hard. Do you have anything in the works? What are you writing right now? Uh, right now, I'm working on uh, a Southern at Atmospheric Gothic Horror uh, adventure. Scott's like, no, no. <laughs> That's awesome. I love <laughs> stuff. Yeah. So I love, it, love it, love it. going to run on here? That's the big question. Well, I've got some contractual obligations to meet before I can do that here. <laughs> <laughs> One, I... girlfriend, second, DM. No, can't do it. <laughs> do it until I DM for her. <laughs> Well, why don't you drag her on the show and she make will it not come on the show? She's seen us. She's just like, I am not coming on. <laughs> not even for me. Well, she is your biggest fan, <laughs> but <laughs> over the show, you know, we need to take you need to come on so we can both take over the show. Right. <laughs> All right. No, she's rooting for you. So our beard bearded obfish games or aka Kyle. He's not paying attention, is he? No. <laughs> he's no. Doing, no, he is paying attention, but he's Kyle. doing something because it's Kyle. You're muted. No, he's yeah. not. He's I muted. know I'm muted. <laughs> You're, You're muted. <laughs> hey, everybody. I'm Kyle. I am a player. I played Dewey Doc Mel. I played uh, Dibble Thibbet this last Thursday. You Dibble Thibbet it. We deliver it. it. And uh, <laughs> what else did I do? <laughs> so funny. Oh, I also uh, 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 I DM sometimes too. Yeah, over. But not Dave. as much as Dave. Not as much as David does. No, no, <laughs> that is not totally not true. Okay, so. but I'm not as good as David is. We that is totally get ready not because true. <laughs> three weeks from now, David's one shot is going to appear. No, it's hope not. everyone's <laughs> ready for it. It's it awesome. Is not, it is not going to happen. <laughs> it's going to happen so it much. It is not. <laughs> already happened. It has already <laughs> happened. You Wait, need to look for it on <laughs> YouTube. Three weeks from now, I believe is Gen Con. So <laughs> <laughs> it won't be happening in three weeks from now. No. Uh, the, no. no episode yeah. that night because Frank will be running oh, a couple yeah. of tutorials at Gen Con. Uh -huh. So once they are approved, there we go. Damn it, Gen Con, approve his scenarios so we can freaking add them mm -hmm. to our cards. Uh, all right, so now we get to the usual first topic, which is a look Ugh. back at the games this week, which we had to shit beer that the 4th of July fell on a Saturday and we all decided to take it off because you know it's a holiday. Because Carol likes to take it up. No, I'm just kidding. And Kyle <laughs> likes to take it off. And what? But it takes it off, not me. That's nipple. That, that was some nipple right there. Just that was a nip, nip slip. <laughs> there was no slip about that nip. <laughs> a slip of the nip. <laughs> That's so Kyle. All right, so I'm going to give this to Kyle. Kyle, why don't you talk about episode 121, a felonious follow-up. I would love to, but I actually didn't start that episode. So David, why don't you start how it did? And I'll end it for you. David, you oh, go. You oh, yeah, that's right. Because right. he it's... didn't come in until, like, I don't know, a good 20 minutes later. <laughs> See, if our Ten most devoted later. fan, Carol, can't watch the episode, what are you guys doing here? Get out of here. Well, actually, I had reasons. I, I want to make sure that I, uh, I'm not getting knowledge that I shouldn't be getting. Oh, that I'm was the reason. Money. Okay. I wanted to check with these guys first because i said i it drives me nuts when my when i know knowledge my characters don't okay. and then trying to keep it separate can be confusing all right well david why don't you start and then when he jump when he gets here let him take over okay so basically <laughs> uh this last episode in cacophony uh picks up right where the previous one left off 
uh, we had just finished an encounter doing an investigation into the murder of a courier uh, delivery person by the name of FedEx. So what? wait, wait, you were investig why are we investigating the murder? We all know who how that went down. Shut up, Carol. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, we were following up on leads uh, from our encounter with FedEx there. Uh, okay. So <laughs> anyway, uh, so uh, we it starts out with uh, uh, early in the morning, we get a knock on the door. Zadar answers. He's still in his Gina, you know, Carano form, you know, warrior princess type. Anyway, oh yeah, uh, and Zadar opens the door, and it is Fauntleroy from the uh, Adventures Guild in Cacophony, sent by the Guildmaster from Under These Nuts. So anyway, God, these names. These nuts. Anyway, I know. <laughs> we get set with the task of finding uh, a particular mark in the. Uh, in the city, but the, it turns out to be on the outskirts of the city, kind of like Old Town. Uh, anyway, we uh, track down some clues to, to find out who this mark is, and then suddenly we <laughs> find them, and it is <laughs> the very, this little entrepreneurial guy by the name of, what's his name, Kyle? Dibble Thibbet. Dibble Thibbet. Dibble Thibbet. Oh. It. He dibble Thibbet's it. delivery service. You dibble Thibbet it, we deliver it. it. Yep. So, uh, yeah, after our uh, meeting of, with Dibble and uh, uh, some coaxing with him to kind of join us in our investigation because it would behoove Dibble if we did. So anyway, we tried to coerce him, you know, through coercion, but yeah. that didn't work. Not at all. It turns out he is too genuine and honest a person to be dragged into uh, coercion and bribery by yeah. the likes of them yeah didn't work anyway Did work. <laughs> but eventually he joined us uh there was a couple of incidents like on the way going into old town that uh involved uh <laughs> A small litter of puppies that turned out to be rabbit at the end. <laughs> so, oh, geez. Oh, yeah. Don't give away free puppies, folks. Just another day in cacophony. <laughs> anyway. Ooh, I like the harmony. Uh, after this uh, an incident with uh, an assassin uh, who um, uh, had a mark also on oh, uh, Dibble what Thibbet. What was their name? Something the name? Lung. Something uh, the Lung. <laughs> something the Lung. <laughs> because they could blow crossbow bolts out of a blow, blow gun. gun. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my God. And uh, yeah, so anyway, we um, apprehend this assassin, take him back to Dibble's place. Uh, they didn't cooperate. So Dibble sent them to deal with Gary. Garrett. <laughs> Garrett. The meth alligator. The meth addict alligator. So. The free puppies have rabies. The mm -hmm. sewers have meth gators. Oh, yeah. Great time to be in gators. cacophony, guys. Yeah, so we find... Did it have that meth mouth with like, all the fucked up teeth? Yeah, it's a gator with missing teeth. Chances are, I mean, she let her survive. She just, just like, got gummed. Big sucker. <laughs> so anyway uh we follow up on uh somehow we managed to discern clues or whatever from what we had found and we ended up uh finding out who put the contract out on divot so we followed that up it took us to uh some skeezy bar Excuse me. I wouldn't say it was skeezy. I thought it was a very pleasant bar with lots of wonderful treats that were decorated the place. Yeah. There were these buttermilk cheese critters. You know, one was a, a pepper kraken. One mm -hmm. was a funky hedgehog. They had ceviche tomato bombs and the drinks. Poppin' lemon drop drinks. Oh, you know, yeah. it was absolutely amazing mm -hmm. the food they had in that Bar. Yes. And you can tell they got it from the acid test from Odd Fish Games. Yes. If you want to try and make some of those delicious things that they had on there? Go to Odd Fish Games. Buy the acid test. It's a nice way to enjoy some nice cold meals. It actually is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> it is. 
<laughs> so anyway, to sum it up, we ended up having a confrontation with uh, this, uh, turned out to be some kind of crime boss, um, <laughs> and set up with Tibble killing him. Zadar uh, ending up uh, taking on his persona and identity and using it uh, against another would-be assassin that came into the bar. <laughs> and since Zadar assumed the persona of the crime boss turned bar against the, the assassin and she she dimension doored out of there so anyway right. yeah and then we just wrapped it all up from there yeah <laughs> i told divot where the package was or could have been and he found it and lived happily ever after yeah. with his little larceny so Lars, Lars, what? <laughs> uh, Dibble, Thibbet is a uh, yeah, that's true. Okay, exactly. I'm playing Dibble. <laughs> I want to play in a game with this uh, Tibble. Tibble? Dibble. Dibble, Dibble, Thibbet of Dibble. Dibble. Thibbet's Dibble. delivery service. You yeah. Dibble Thibbet it, we deliver it. it. Yeah, when he got stabbed, he had Dibble Dribble coming down off the knife god that's terrible <laughs> that dibble dribble that got everywhere like surprisingly something. enough yeah, like, yeah. what was the name right of this <laughs> little <laughs> little what? dibble dribble little, 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 little right there <laughs> all right david was the skeezy bar one of the ones we had been to before no this was a this was an even skeezier bar oh so. my god so we're with going a to great menu Thanks what's that all right, so, so we that's it. Unfortunately, I don't think any of us watched Sunday. Unfortunately, I'm way behind on that. Now. I can I'm give a little said, recap. Well, yeah, exactly. All right, David, give us a little rundown that we heard from our fearless leader who ran that. Uh, it's actually it sounded like a ton of fun and a lot of interesting crap happened. So go ahead, David. Well, if you if you happen to watch the previous episode, it was a whole lot of shenanigans from the first one. Uh, from 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 what Frank tells me, that uh, yes, the party has left Cragwitch, but before that, there uh, there was an ensuing Bard War, which that was started by yeah. Kofi S V Bitters and yeah. Robert of Zeppelin. Yes, Robert of Zeppelin did not appreciate Kofi S enlisting. You know, the, the solicitation of other bards. So anyway, uh, so anyway, basically ends up in a bard war. Uh, from what I understand, there was another sexual escapade, this time outside uh, outhouse sex with Griselda. Uh, they make it to the high seas. Uh, they're, they're, but before they left, there was a conversation in the bar with with sailors about zonkies. So you have to watch the first episode to find out about the zonkies. And then, yeah, they ended up getting boarded by Minotaur pirates. So, so uh, watch the episode. It sounds interesting. Boarded by a Minotaur pirate. Yeah. I, I said it like that on, on purpose. Right. I, know are, I just wanted you to know that I, I, I picked that up. Because one of them probably did. <laughs> probably so. I left Craig Witch to go and meet up or get boarded by these Minotaur pirates. So, so yeah, it should be. Just it watch the episode, folks. I'm going to now. <laughs> it sounds like it sounds like a typical session of Murder Hobo Inc. with nine thousand shenanigans, which is okay. what makes this podcast so cool. All right, so I guess we could actually, ooh, we're actually a little early, probably because we only had two episodes to cover and, and there's only one that people played. <clears throat> so uh, so this week's topic, this week's class discussion, since we are back to it, is one of my favorites. Other than the bard, it's the rogue, which I guess you could kind of say is an offshoot of a bard. <laughs> uh, there is. It's the other around. way around. <laughs> well, well, that's true. That's true. Uh, although bards were an offshoot of like... God will tell us about that. <laughs> to do everything. But that was another episode. And, you know, you can always check that out in the archives. But I, I, love, I love rogues in every freaking edition. I've always enjoyed playing them. Um, 
So I think that we will start with uh, a little bit of a new, different archetypes. Uh, so you guys all have the list, and there's definitely you should. Uh, uh, say, you know what, Kyle? I start with you in case you don't have the list in front wow, of you. Wow, that wow, that's terrible. Thanks, I mean, luckily, there's a script here that said that you would do just that, so I'm prepared for it. Really? <laughs> Where's my lines? Yep. <laughs> it's a sure, Carol, I would be happy to do that. Actually, you know Odd what? Oddfish Games. You know what? How about, actually, how about, I'm going to actually start with a little something different instead of just going archetypes. What do you like about the bard? What is fun what do you find? How, what what do you class are we doing today? Bar. Oh my God. I started talking about Bard. So just, yeah, yeah. How many minutes in? Folks, Please, she mentioned no. Bard. That's so Carol. <laughs> okay, okay. You know what? No, because I'm actually I'm excited about this. because She I have loves like, Bards, folks. Bro. She loves them. But you know what? I have more rogues than I have Bards. That's the ironic thing. Uh, <laughs> that's what I get when I start talking about something else. Uh, so what is your... All right. So why... So Kyle, why do you like the barbarians? Well, the mighty. Oh, no, 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 why do? You, hey, wait. Why did you take? Uh, why did you take uh, uh, levels in rogue on your barbarian? Why did I take levels in rogue on my barbarian? Yeah. What? Uh, because take? he got locked up in prison and he did hard time. Because he's a power gamer that wants to optimize every single fucking thing he does. Whoa. Exactly. Whoa! It would not Just be because D &D. I'm playing a gnome barbarian that has advantage on all the barbarian sucky saves, <laughs> and he can't be killed doesn't make me a power gamer. Yeah, it's like in well, his entrance that allows him to do all sorts of weird shit that you would never do as a barbarian or a bard or a rogue. I'm oh, too new a player to do that crap, so I don't even bother. <laughs> hey, hey, wait, wait, wait. I, I beg to differ on the he can't be killed part. It just doesn't really cost us much to bring him back. That's <laughs> right. He can't be killed because he was dead two episodes ago. Sure. It's hard sure. to do it. You, But that's barbarians. So it does what happen. Do you yeah, we're not talking about barbarians. Carol, no, come on. Get on topic. Let's talk about rogues. Carol, tell me about rogues. What do you like about hey. rogues yourself? No, I'm not going to. Fine. Scott, what do you enjoy yes. about the rogue? So, so th this is what I this is what I enjoy about a rogue is that, uh, and what I don't enjoy about a rogue. I'm gonna I'm gonna get two sides of this because okay, cool. I always okay. do that. Um, what I like about a rogue is that in its element, it's the the it, it's bar none the best at what it does. So, if you're trying to observe traps, if you're trying to get things unlocked, if you're in a dungeon. If you're in certain types of atmospheres, certain types of areas, and you need a certain type of job done, no one does it better than a rogue, period. It's just no one does it better. It, it's, it's like the perfect tool to fit that job is the rogue. So that's, 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 my, that's what I really like about a rogue is that no one else does it better. Now, what I don't like about a rogue is that their utility then starts getting somewhat limited when you place them outside of their environment. Um, a, a party full of rogues and a bunch of frontline combat is not good. If you have too many rogues inside a party, um, then the party becomes unbalanced. Um, it's, it's a thing that every party needs a rogue, but you can't, every party doesn't need too many of them. So that my my issue is is that their 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 utility uh, is like at one hundred percent in certain areas and close to zero in others, and that's that was is what I love about a rogue, and that's what I don't like so much about a rogue. But I'm going to point out something here in your comment, and you're you're right, you're a, you're absolutely right. A rogue is not a healer, and a rogue is not, but. To me, that's the beauty of a game like this, a cooperative game, is that right. hey, the best groups are not ones made up of all characters that are good at everything. They're made up of characters that are good at a specialty. And basically, you're a really good group because it's what the whole 
what everybody does together. Until 5e, <laughs> where you can basically be one character, but do everything. <laughs> no, sorry, I, 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 I probably should have gone, no, it, it's, that's the segue into talking about what, what I think is next, uh, what, what, what I think we should be talking about, this is my opinion, is the different type of archetypes and the different types of rogues that you have, how they specialize and, and what I, I've told what I like and what I don't like. And I think that all the different types of, uh, you know, different types of rogues you can be are meant to address those issues. But, but that, that's, that's my overall opinion on rogues. So Carol, sorry, I did not mean to talk. No, over. no it's fine. And, and, and as I said, I just, that just was something that's popped in mind though. Is like, I think actually that's, that, that that's fine that they're not good at everything because it should be the whole of the group rather than just one character. David, how about you? What do you like about the rogue or don't like, or you can, or you don't have to give a don't like if there's nothing you don't like about him, but. There's I'll nothing I don't like about the <laughs> No, uh, rogue is one of those classes that um, I didn't think about playing right off the bat. And then uh, I started playing in a campaign and my DM wanted me to do the roles and do the mechanics to a rogue that ended up in our party. And so I started, started playing it. They do all the RP stuff. I do like the combat decision-making and things like that in roles. And I really started to fall in love with the rogue. And then um, that's the reason why I created a rogue for the cacophony episodes. Um, it, it just, I had in mind for, for a character to be uh, a charlatan, uh, some kind of, you know, shapeshifter, which got, is already done on, I don't know, some other program that we do here. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> But it just uh, it just really fit uh, with the the persona of Zadar that I created. So I went with that, and I went I dove into the arcane trickster, and um, yeah, I, I I just like it. Uh, I'm looking over the other archetypes right now. There's so many that I want to try. So you know, but yeah, I mean, I like it. I never thought about it before. Started playing it, and yeah. Now, it, now it's m one of my go-to archetypes. So, all right, Kyle. <clears throat> yeah. So, how about you? All right. So, back to uh, the original question. Are we addressing me now, Carol? I'm totally addressing you. What do you uh, like about? Why are you undressing me? That's rude. Don't look at me. Okay. Oh, totally that's creepy. You. That's the that exact was, that same look I give. Yeah. No, that's that's perfect. <laughs> But what do you like about rogues or don't like about rogues or both? Both. I could probably do both. Um, what I would say is right after the fighter, I think you have the most versatile uh, uh, class. Um, a lot of that comes with creativity. Um, and a lot of this is because it's really tied to one uh, a stat, which is having a good dexterity after that if you want to be the luchador you can add strength into that or if you want to be the hunter you add wisdom you want to be a face you want to be a pirate captain uh add charisma or you want to pretend to be the stage illusionist you add intelligence and um uh you just come up with a lot of amazing ideas um uh, for example, um, you can use the thief subclass to become a medic, uh, a doctor who, you know, your sneak attack is, you know, where those arteries are and you're going to stick them. You and already you have, did that, man. <laughs> I know. I love that. And uh, I really the barber surgeon that. was awesome. The barber surgeon. He, he'll be back at some point. Uh, yeah, was, but yeah, being able to have fast hands and be able to heal people without using magic maybe you want a darker and grittier character and the rogue is that way maybe you want a chef who's good with knives there's your sneak attack in uh maybe you use scout you're good at handling uh animals uh uh and then you know you spend the rest of the time making uh fancy pants sandwiches and you know if you get stuck 
on what goes into your fancy pants sandwich, may I suggest the acid test from Oddfish Games? <laughs> it lets you roll up all these amazing things. If you're like, oh my gosh, I want to make a fancy pants sandwich. It's like, <laughs> oh, what kind of oil should I use for my fancy pants sandwich? A Will D it be truffle oil? Uh, let's find out. No, it'll be coconut oil because it's sweet and nutty. Oh my gosh, what should I fill it with though? A D20? Oh, I'll use smoked paprika and coconut oil. Mmm, sounds delicious. That's what actually really good. Filler. What That's kind really of filler? Combination. What's going to be the filler, Kyle? Zucchini. Zucchini, smoked paprika. You got that coconut oil. Obviously, we're going vegetarian here. Why else? Or something. And then, of course, you got to have bread. Bread on there. Uh, you roll another D10 and you get potato bread. You get your potatoes. You get your zucchini. You get a little bit of smoked paprika on that, and it tastes fucking wonderful. <laughs> what we talked about again? Oh, yeah, right. We talked about the chef. The acid test. What? So you have the book. Uh, yes. By the way, Oddfish Games, if you'd like to reimburse me that $15, that reasonable $15, I would say no, Oddfish Games. $15 is too reasonable a price for you to refund me that because it is worth every penny. I'd pay $16 if I had $16. Oh, this book is what hey, I... Hey. I'm going to seize control because we're not you better. Talking. You better. Cause but, you know, he like, he's all over me about digressing. Hey, what? No, no, no. This is yeah, odd fish games and it's worth it because odd fish games is amazing. But what I don't <laughs> like about the rogue, I can't think of things I can't don't like about odd fish games. Let me tell you, except that sewage smell. Am I right guys? Well, I thought that was just... No, it's great. Anyway, uh, so what I don't like about the rogue, Carol, please don't interrupt me. You were just so nice, respecting... I mean, come on. What I don't yeah. like about the rogue is that um, it is very much an individual class. Uh, unless it's an entire party of rogues, you have one rogue sneaking in past the guards and all of a sudden, while splitting your group is good... Uh, it very much then relies on the DM to do a much better job of, okay, here's rogue time. Let's make sure it's interesting for everybody else. Okay, this is everybody else time. Keep it interesting for the rogue. Makes it a little bit more complicated. And then the rogue class also tends to draw in a certain type of people who <laughs> yeah. rob everything from everyone. Yeah, look at you. Look at you, Heidi. She knows damn right well. I, I, she's even watching this. Heidi, Heidi will actually do that. She'll play rogues that will rob you blind. It, that's like her favorite class. Actually, you so know who should check their pockets? I, I can't talk about rogues without beer. Why are you stealing? <laughs> is Dewey stealing? Uh, from I have checked my pockets. No, I think that's a sorceress that's doing the stealing. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know, I find well, out. He just left us, man. <laughs> oh. wow. But hey, you know, that gives us time to talk about something near, dear, oh, and special no. to my heart. No, because we're going to... Pirate go Dog Dice. Oh. They are amazing dice makers. Carol, come on. Tell me she about your Pirate Dog Dice. Come on. You want to show them off. Show us your dice, Carol. You've done it every single time since you've gotten... Are those, are those music notes in your dice? They are. Oh. Hard. Say, if you ever want, I feel like this is nothing but an ad, guys. Uh, absolutely. I'm really, I'm really, I really... Because our producer, Carrie, who actually took the night off, maybe she's making dice. At the, at she is. Moment. She's actually making my dog poop dice. Proof that pirate dog dice can polish a turd. <laughs> I doubt she's literally making them from a turd, but oh my god, <laughs> you don't know, and it's Carrie, and she's known me long enough. <laughs> that's 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 the thing is it is our producer who is the uh, who is the owner of Pirate Dog Dice. Um, I don't know if she has a story mm. yet. I, so they're working on it. They're working on it. It's gonna launch soon. So Carol, tell us about. 
Rogues uh, uh, yourself. What is your opinion? Because honestly, you let the three of us talk about it. And honestly, Carol, you've turned this between the roles into one big ad space. And personally, I just want to hear about rogues. Carol, what yeah. do you think about rogues personally? I think uh, I don't I'm care gonna... about bards, rogue. I, da, 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 da. I'm going to turn it right back to you. Archetype. What is your favorite archetype? Uh, and... Scouts, because they are kind of like hunters. Where you just grab a Speaking deer and you bounce it. Oh my, what? Oh, oh my god. Who saw that coming? But that's uh, for the ranger show, not for the. Oh, the come on. You're not talking about rangers? Oh. No. <laughs> no? Uh, no, no. no. Hey, Scott, don't worry. We're about to talk about archetypes. You could in include the scout rogue. He's my favorite. Oh, I love the deer. Oh, poor, poor Bambi. <laughs> I know. All right. Well, what is what? What? Sorry. What archetype were you talking? Starting to talk about? Uh, scout. Scout. Okay. Go for it. I was. I was talking about scout. Oh my gosh! I love scout. Completely underrated, though. It's like, hey, you want to play a ranger, but with no magic. Scout. You mean a rogue? <laughs> hey, I said a ranger with no magic. Oh, I get what scout. You're saying. Okay. Saying, obviously I carol i know what i'm talking about we're not talking about bars we're not talking about rangers we're talking about rogues and sometimes i just like a good scout rogue who can run around really fast and doesn't have to hide every single time to get their sneak attack i'd rather them just be able to run circles around the entire thing kind of like the swashbuckler but no one here actually likes the swashbuckler rogue right no. guys no. Uh no, yeah, my swashbuckler saved your character's ass more than once. So shush, David. <laughs> I, I will. I'll get to me later. All right, David. How about you? What's your favorite archetype, and what do you want? And tell us all about it. What well, do you I like? got a new one that just just appeared. But all right, fine. What do you like? No, about I'm gonna. I'm that gonna is a lie. No one has seen this. Nobody seen that yet. Anywhere. <laughs> Some new, uh, some new uh, archetype that shouldn't up on D and D Beyond for some and not for others. Oh, D and D Beyond. The, okay. I, w I won't even go there. Um, the, I, I'll just cover the one that I play, and that's uh, Arcane Trickster. Um, one of the good things about Arcane Trickster is, like, if you never considered being a caster at all, well, here's your shot. Uh, it's very limited uh, magic. Um, just illusions and enchantments, but I mean, very useful. Um, I, I use it with my character all the time. Uh, my, my character, you know, primarily depends upon misdirection and deception. So, um, and I mean, it, it is a great class, but uh, it can be pretty devastating too. Uh, there's cantrips that you can use uh, to actually augment your sneak attack. And um, it, it can be pretty devastating, especially if you're a high level arcane trickster and you use uh, uh, some particular cantrips or some spells. One of the things that you'll eventually get to do is steal a spell and you'll be able to actually make a spell sneak attack. So it can be very, very deadly. So mm. I feel like it's a different feel for a rogue too. Like when I play, I, so my swashbuckler is a rogue. So we've got two rogue classes in a three-person party. But um, but I feel like you're so different than mm. a swashbuckler. It's 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 just completely different. And it, oh, yeah. and I feel like we don't overlap as much because um, of that. Arcane tricksters are mostly about control. You know, they're one of the control subclasses, just like um, Carol's favorite one, the bard. So, <laughs> okay. the battlefield control. Yeah, okay. yeah. Control. Arcane right. trickster is is a lot of control. You can lock somebody down with Tasha's hideous laughter. They're they're Your prone. Spell, man. There I you think go. Right. Use it all the time. Right. Try to use it all the time. I use it all the time. It just it just that's the one thing I always find it tough is when. Use spells. You have to make a save. It's so out of your hands when somebody else has to make the save, and it's like, oh, yeah. oh and then again, it's like such a bummer. Wisdom All save, right. save, save my bacon. <laughs> so, GM Poobah, okay, Scott, what's so, your? 
yeah, so so my so my favorite archetype of, of the thief is the is a subclass uh, for the assassin. So <clears throat> again, we go back to story time with Grandpa. Mm -hmm. and, uh, what I what I loved about them, um, and we have it, it starting out all the way back in a first edition D and D as a subclass of a thief. But what I loved about it was the directness. Of, of the assassin. It is an evil character, straight up evil. And their primary says, their primary function of assassins is killing. So what I liked about, about that archetype of an assassin is the clarity of their mission, the clarity of their purpose. Because what one thing that I, that I never have liked, and this is a total personal preference, is the blending of, of character classes into one amorphous class that does a little bit of everything the you know jack of all trades uh that can do you know pretty much absolutely everything and and i like it you know, you know getting back to your point carol is that D, D is a collaborative game and it doesn't do any good if you have six in my opinion if you have six characters seven characters seven players who each one of their players do a little bit of everything I like the specialization and I thought that the assassin as an archetype for a rogue was probably the most specialized class that there ever was. Their job was basically to kill. Now my, my interpretation currently um, of, of them in, in, in 5e as, uh, as an archetype, I, I, I think that they've been nerfed a little bit because because I like the fact, and I've always envisioned, you know, um, an assassin is someone that's very, very good at poisons, someone that's very good at, yes, sneak attacks and backstabbings, but the creativity on how they're going to kill you and the idea of the contractual nature of what they're doing, you, you can have an assassin in your party, they never know it, uh, and, you know, you could be the mark. And and that that adds a role play element to to the to the assassin that 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 I've always enjoyed. I've always enjoyed the idea that you know anyone can be a mark, and I however I achieve my objective at the end of the day is is it, it, it interjects a level of role playing into it that I've always enjoyed. But the directness and the singularity and the um, singular purpose of the assassin has always made that my my favorite archetype. It's cool. Uh, <clears throat> so we'll get. To, I will actually talk about mine because he didn't put it on the list for that specific reason because he knew I'd talk about it. Uh, my favorite. You didn't have is, to. My favorite. I mean, I actually I do have a thief. Radiant, I believe, is a thief version. But but the one I think I enjoy more is I do think I enjoy the swashbuckler because, like Kyle said, you don't have to. <clears throat> you don't have to meet it's not as hard to meet the conditions to get sneak attack with a swashbuckler as it is with most of your other standard rogues um, because you've got fancy footwork. Now the other neat thing too is if you get a melee hit on that on your enemy, you can actually run away, you can actually leave without provoking an attack of opportunity, which I think is a pretty cool little uh, benefit too. But my favorite part is being able to have sneak attack as long as, well, actually, basically, I think you can have sneak attack almost any time because the special ability allows you to have it if nobody's within five feet of you. But if somebody else is harassing it, I'm pretty sure that that ability doesn't go away. Carol, it doesn't. Do you believe so I have to ask one quick question? I'm sorry, Carol. I don't mean to talk to you. I say one quick question. Do you believe that the swashbuckler was based on Inigo Montoya? Maybe I don't know. I, I don't. I. It's very possible because let's face it, he was. Um, mm -hmm. he, he he is he is he was a swashbuckler, no doubt, yeah. a swashbuckler, and hell of a good fighter. Hell of a good uh, fighter. That's right. And he had fancy footwork. Yes, he did. It says it is very possible that that was one of their influences. Um. <laughs> I mean, or, you know, even think about like Errol Flynn or that's, that's the other one and that pops to mind when you think of Swashbuckler or heck any of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, you know, there's all Swashbucklers there too. Um, I think that's a thing too. I like that. I love Pirates. There's, there's no doubt about it. And, uh, 
being able to play a pirate is a lot of fun. Actually, it's more it's more fun in the other game that I brought her from, uh, where I actually am a pirate and I'm actually the captain of my ship. So that is it's so cool. That's convenient. I used to have a golden <laughs> pirate shirt. What's that? I used to have a golden pirate shirt. If I can find it and still fit in it, I'll have to wear it one day. <laughs> well, you have to make a swashbuckler to 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 do you know to to play perfect, when you're wearing everything. that. But um, but yeah, hey, you I do our that... t-shirts, Carol. You should do a, totally a swashbuckler murder hobo t-shirt. Maybe I will. I I just I don't have it's I don't have time these days to do that. <laughs> yeah, because I really want to write more stuff to run to, to DM too. But I just don't have time lately. Um, my job has been busy. Just like we believe in David. <laughs> I know David. I'll let that lie. Yes, <laughs> I do. <laughs> oh okay. my god, folks. I've gotten myself in deep. <laughs> that's, that's what she so, said. But oh, how did she do that? <laughs> wow, Scott, that was good. Um, <laughs> so no, but, but anyways, Swashbuckle I found has been just, I love sneak attack. I think that's the thing. I love rolling more dice. So Swashbuckler just makes it that much easier for me to roll more dice. And it's really satisfying when I can actually do a crap ton of damage. <laughs> Not all my characters. Sneak I attack! Yeah, basically, if I can do that. <laughs> it's pretty much sneak attack. <laughs> they have definitely oh, hey, I rolled a bunch of sixes, guys. <laughs> no, from all right. So from uh, from third edition or three point five to now, they've definitely nerfed the rogue a bit, or at least because I know Pathfinder is three point five basically, and I know how many dice I was rolling as a rogue is at like level fifteen. It was it was like twenty d six or something like that. It was ridiculous for my wow. sneak attack. All I basically I roll all my attacks and then roll all my damage. And yeah, I was rolling. I had like the line lineup of uh, D sixes, and I think my sneak attack was like six or seven. And I don't; it doesn't go that high anymore. I know yeah. they have definitely nerfed down the numbers a bit, but still, <laughs> it's like can, ten, ten D six. Yeah, they can sometimes be twenty. Uh, not that many. If so, you're an assassin who gets a critical <laughs> hit, yes, it is. Yes, it is. All right. <laughs> See, I have not played an assassin. Oh, the other, you know what? I never actually said what I like them. One of the things, it's a lot like what Kyle said. I think I like rogues because I like the what you can pull off of to role play. I think I come up with the more interesting backstories for those characters. Because I'll it, because even though um, I don't tend to play, and we'll get to this actually, that's the next topic, is dispelling the theme of no honor among thieves and working with a party. Um, I'll start this because I tend to, I tend to like to work with people and that's just me personally, rather than going around and picking all their pockets. You know, I think the worst, one of the things I did was I found a treasure hoard when I was sneaking around. But it was the time actually he, that, that Kyle brought up was there was one time where the, and everybody at the table agreed and I'm, I had a super, super sneaky, sneaky rogue. Um, and I basically had to scout out an entire, uh, God, was it ogre, ogre encampment? Um, and it was a big, it was like in, in the ruins of a city. So it was fairly large. And I mean, I basically was, I forget how many checks I made, but it was a lot. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't get caught because my stealth was so freaking high and the party helped me out too. But but yeah, basically everyone was, everyone, I guess, was thoroughly entertained. I kept going, you sure you all want to? But the only time that's, but my point was, is that the only time I ever really took anything from them is I found this treasure pile in a cave and I basically pocketed a couple of the gems for myself and then presented the rest because there was plenty there to go around and nobody cared. And you know what happened to those two gems? They went right back to the party anyways to buy diamond dust or something because we were getting high level and we needed that to for resurrections and things like that so but i for one per, per, absolutely believe rogues do not can absolutely have honor 
and they don't have to just be your typical pickpocket. They can be scout, like you said, you can be scouts. You can be, you can, you could be an ex. You know, that, that was actually that character. She was an ex cat It's Green Beret. <laughs> Not My quite. Name is Malcolm. She was. I she was, saw some shits in that foxhole for twenty years. <laughs> Learned how to stab a man really good from it. Real good. good. Lord. <laughs> That's a deal. She was an ex cat burglar, and she would go after rich people. I said, this may be a character I will bring into Murder Hobo Inc. at some point in the future. Uh, Charlie uh, was everywhere. Oh, sorry. We're not doing that bit anymore. <laughs> anyway. <hey. laughs> <Tropical> thunder. <laughs> but, see, but the thing of it is, my view is, is that it's better to work with the party than to alienate them. And if you're stealing from them, also, not only you risk alienate them, you also risk making them, if you're taking their money and their stuff, they can't get better stuff to protect you. So I feel like you're hurting the party as a whole and a smart rogue wouldn't steal for that reason. So that's my thought on the, uh, you know, how you play something that, you know, where you're not just that type that's stealing from the party. Uh, but all right, Kyle, how about you? How about the spelling the no honor among thieves? The spelling the, oh, come on. <sighs> Of course, there's no honor among thieves. Bullshit. There's only one thief in your party, and he's the rogue. And you're not thieves; <laughs> you're goody two shoe paladins. No, uh, but this dispelling the idea of no honor. Um, I did mention earlier that it tends to attract the rogue, tends to yeah. attract that kind of person. Um, and honestly, you just kind of really have to be aware of yourself. And you have to metagame. Mm. This is the one case where I say metagaming is the way to go. And you take this in either two directions. One, you metagame and you say, why is my party with them? They're, and they're not stealing from them. That, that would get me killed and everything like that. Yeah. So I'm, I have to make a reason why I'm not stealing from these particular people. Maybe you have the paladin is a, a rival urchin from back in the days who saved your life and now you're just following him around helping him out because he saved your life that one time and you got a metagame uh the other kind is metagaming and saying you know what i'm going to play that thief with the heart of gold but he's not going to start off that way and you talk to the players at your table saying you know what this is the arc i want my character to have he is going to steal from you right away but you know i would definitely love it if you guys could help that along and then whatever happens outside the story and kind of metagame it that way where yeah okay tim is gonna rob our characters blind we're gonna find out but we're not going to kill him when we find out we're gonna role play out this discussion it was talked about but what we're saying we don't know yet until it happens um and so i forgot my train of thought that's easy, it's huh? <laughs> it really is. Like, <laughs> like, man, I am a handsome man on this screen. Uh, I probably smell like something great. from Adventure. Oh my god, I distracted myself. <laughs> I'm right next to Scott. He has the head full of hair. I've got this glorious beard as well, and I'm just like I'm lost in our eyes. And I have neither, and I hate you both. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all right, Scott, how about you next? So it, it, it's an interesting question because from what I said earlier about the, the singular nature of the assassin being my, being my favorite portion, um, I'm not sure if it should be dispelled. Right. I, I'm sure that there is honor, but for me, a thief is all about personal honor. He's going to have his own set of ethos, his own set of morals that he holds higher than the party's ethos and the party's morals. Where those are aligned, he can be a very effective party member. Where they're not, he's not. So I'm, I'm going to explain like a, like a quick hypothetical. You have a you have a situation to where the um, um, you have a party of good characters, all all good characters. The uh, the thief or the rogue and the element and the party is a chaotic good character. He's stealing from the party, 
Um, and the rest of the party is pretty much either neutral good or lawful good, including one or two, you know, lawful good fighter, lawful good paladin. Um, he's stealing every now and then from the party, but he's selling the gems and goods that he's stealing from the party in order to give it to an orphanage. Okay. The party catches him. The, the lawful good paladin catches him in the act, but also is made aware of the reason that he's being stolen from is to support an orphanage. So the overall end is good, but the way he's going about it is totally against the law. So then you have an idea to where the thief is acting as an agent of good, but in a very chaotic way, in a very uh, singular way to where he's looking out for his, this Robin Hood idea where he's stealing from the rich and giving to the poor, assuming that a paladin knight is a very rich, wealthy person who doesn't really need all that. Now, how does that interplay inside party dynamics and how does that dispel or play into the idea of there's no honor among thieves? That to me, that dynamic is very difficult to pull off inside a party unless you do as Kyle said, damn it, he was right. Um, you met again. Mm. The thief has to know why he's doing why he's doing what he's doing. The thief needs to understand what it is motivating him in order to take these actions. If a good player can metagame that correctly, I think it works inside the party dynamic and there can be honor among thieves. Outside of that, it's very difficult, if not impossible. So where I like the assassin is, you don't have to worry about it. He's a dishonorable person and he knows he's a dishonorable person. He's there purely at the convenience of himself and maybe the party is walking along the same path for a little while, but make no mistake, he's there for his own, his, uh, his own motivations, pure and simple. A neutral evil, um, neutral evil assassin is about the, one of the purest players, the purest characters that you can play. Yep. <laughs> no, I think it's sort of a different view, man. I mean, I always thought just just because the class said thief you didn't necessarily have to be a thief but you had those that certain skill set they picked up being a thief in your past or whatever that compromises it and you could be said like a scout or something else i said well, i go back to the medic oh, there carol what go back to the medic he is the right, thief exactly. subclass but he's completely right he knows how to scale a building he knows how to jump far across because people can be anywhere and you have to get to them if you want to be able to heal them correctly so you got to be able to scale up and right. save <laughs> timmy from the yeah, yeah. yeah so, i can see that yeah but i said I, I feel like the thief can encompass so much more than just that pickpocket type ideal or even like my pirate I'm um, simple. I'll, yeah, I'll toss it to you how about you what's your opinion uh and scott covered it so eloquently i was just like oh my god <laughs> To just go to him, last Scott. Time. We've missed you on this. It's show. just the Scott show, you know. No, I love hey, having him. I love the Scott having show Scott. brought to you by Oddfish Fish Games. Yeah, Oddfish. <laughs> right, exactly. And Don Julio, if they will. Uh -huh. if, it's Scott, if it's a Scott show, it has to be brought to you by Don Julio and Pirates. <clears throat> no, right, David. Uh, I think a line. I think alignment is the, is the overall thing for it i mean uh or just the 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 rogue's personal ideology i mean um you know about what is right and what is wrong mm -hmm. you know i mean for mm -hmm. example a, an assassin you know even though that they have their own motivations and stuff like that see somebody wrong but something clicks within it and they go and kill the person that wronged somebody else just you know, just they had this brief glimmer of, you know, nobility for for a second, mm -hmm. you know, but, um, you know, like uh, Scott brought up alignment and, uh, you know, it is a um, it is a, a class where you can truly play a pure uh, aligned character, either pure neutral or lawful evil, you know, uh, it's just. You know, it, it's one of the most diverse uh, classes that there is. I mean, I look at the subclasses. There are 10, now 10 
subclasses for rogue. Not mm-hmm. not Emma, mentioning no, home homebrew Emma. stuff, you know, like the medic. So, but uh, our sh- that should be an archetype. That's that's such a fantastic. But it, it, it yeah. it's it's Love awesome. It. I, I don't mean, think- you could always have a scenario where you know you weren't you weren't always a rogue. I mean, uh, you can have it to where. You, suddenly you're a noble and you find find yourself you've lost everything and mm-hmm. you're you're left to resort to the rogus ar- architect now what, what's you know? the uh what's the, the the archetype you know where it's the rich guy who's bored all the time just like yeah just i bored. stole it because i was bored. oh bored. Uh, pierce brosnan what's what, oh come on oh uh oh god <laughs> come on, you can do it uh, the Thomas Crown Affair. Thomas Fair. That's it. Thomas Crown Affair. Yes. And it was that Cary was the Grant first before movie P- I P- saw was... Nipple. What? <laughs> that's quite an odd thing to say. Yeah, that is odd. Um, hey, shit. What? <laughs> hey, I want to, all right. So it is, on, it is like that time, but I want to, I want to just quickly go over the last thing, which is Shock. the scenarios. Like, the other thing. yeah. So scenarios uh quickly come up with one solo adventure and one for a group of rogues uh david you first solo adventure i'm kind of like drawing a blank Uh, it could be you know you're trying to right a wrong that happened to you or something like that uh as far as like uh like uh, an adventure, I came up with something, and I'm going to make another pop culture reference. Oh, God. The movie The Usual Suspects. You could actually do a rogue uh, adventure over a series of, um, of um, mm. uh, play sessions. And, I mean, just, just have it. You have a literal rogues gallery. <laughs> And you're trying, and you know your DM is like playing the the part of the investigator. You got to interview all these guys, and you're <laughs> nobody cares, Frank. Okay, nobody cares, Frank. 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 But anyway, uh, trying to discern what happened to in this event that happened. So I mean, I think that would be awesome. And turns out there was one bad, big bad guy at the end. So. Well, I hope Kyle's not muted because I was going him next. I'm not muted. Why would I be muted? But uh, he's the wagging. solo adventure. Oh my god. Oh, am I? Yeah, you are wagging. Am I here now? You're, You're here, here now. But You're like eh, eh, eh. Speak All right, go ahead. slower <laughs> and louder. So what I think solo adventures are perfect for rogues. Am I still lagging or can I talk normally? No, you're okay now. Okay. Well, Eddie lags. The one-person solo adventure, and you can grow it out to uh, include a party of rogues. But, you know, you have, like David was saying earlier, the investigator. Maybe you're doing a Sherlock Holmes-Moriarty deal where, okay, you're going to run Sherlock Holmes, who is your player, through Moriarty crimes that are happening, and he's going to have to put together clues, and you're going to have this epic battle between Mastermind and it. Inquisitor? It's not Inquisitor because I'm thinking a different Inquisitive? inquisitive. Yeah, it's inquisitive. inquisitive. Okay, not Inquisitor. Okay. Yeah, Inquisitive. Uh, or you have the scout who needs to sneak into an enemy encampment to pull something out. Maybe you have a chase scene because, you know, scout rogues are very good at running away and you do that. Uh, maybe it's the assassination of a tyrant king or uh, uh, maybe a good king, you know, throw the assassin in there. Uh, or finally, you do a church mice deal where your rogue is stealing from the Vatican the Shroud of Turin. Now, why the Shroud is in the Vatican is because it's all a conspiracy theory. Hudson Hawk! Yes! Hudson Hawk! <laughs> Would you like to swing on a star? Gary Moon. Our chat. So, oh, my uh, God. anyway, uh, as far as that, you know, you generally expand it to the heist mission um, where 
at that point, and I need more time to come up with a better creativity solo one shot. But you say, okay, guys, take three levels in Rogue at least, and then you can expand from there. That way, you can have the barbarian Rogue, who's the muscle thug guy. You have, I don't know what else, but yeah, and then you pull off a heist like that. All right. And last but not least, Scott. Okay, so for a solo adventure, I like the idea of you've been caught. You're the sole survivor of a party that's just been um, that's been caught red-handed doing something, and you have to escape. You have to escape the city. So um, you you have to use all your skills as a rogue to hide, evade, climb, scale walls, blend in, and get out of an area where you're being hunted. That would be my idea of a nice, good solo uh, adventure for a rogue. Town's That's on lockdown, so and you got to get out. Right, exactly. Town's on lockdown, you got to get out. Um, for party adventure, the, <laughs> the the heist is the classic. Um, you know, trying to pull off a heist. I would, um, I would probably maybe get out of that slightly different in that you're a party. <laughs> See, it, it's. That's hard, frankly. Now, th that is one of the harder ones, because if you're a party of rogues, let's say four or five different archetypes, um, that would be a difficult thing to, to, to pull off. It, it, to me, I would have to have a little more thought on that. Um, maybe maybe to, um, not to not to steal something, but you've been given a very specific mission that... Um, and I honestly, honestly, I, I, I probably could not do it. I, I, to me, just mentally, I cannot get my head around uh, the singular purposes of, of, of rogues. And I would have to ask Kyle because I can't do it. Can't do it. Come on, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he was doing the whole time folks <laughs> i told you he had the green screen shirt on today so it's funny because he didn't actually really unless uh frank caught that really quick he didn't seem to script the cameras too badly all right so final thoughts uh let's see well i'll start with you scott since i ended with you there yeah, so um, um, Love the Rogue is the concept. Uh, I tend to play them personally a little bit too singular vision, too singular minded. Um, maybe I'm not quite up to speed, but, um, but I love them for their, uh, for their singular purpose and for their just, they're just the best of what they do. You know, nobody does it better than a rogue when you're asking them to do a specific thing. That's what I love about them but I'm probably not up to date enough with, um, with how to play them correctly to properly adapt all the different uh, archetypes. Yeah, Frank actually posted. Nobody does it better. Makes me feel sad for the rest. Nobody does it. I'm not gonna interrupt you. Baby, baby, you're the you're best. You're the best. What? Sorry. What? Uh, we were going Hudson Hawk. We were doing Swinging on a Star. What is that bullshit? <laughs> it turned into a musical, folks. Okay. <laughs> we're going to have to have Between the Rolls a musical episode at some that point. That would be awesome. Oh, man. That's a good idea. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh my God. Thank man. You. Gonna die of a heart attack. I'll start writing the odd fish game song that I'll throw in there every five minutes. <laughs> the odd fish games. Uh, uh, the odd fish games every five minutes. Gonna be a minute. Oh my god, we're never gonna end this episode tonight, David. Nope. Final thoughts. Uh final thoughts. I I love the art. I love this I love the class. I love the archetypes. There's a new archetype that uh, just came out called um, it's called the wild card and I'm oh, from that... New Orleans folks and I love the character Gambit so Gambit. there you go <laughs> no I mean one of the things that I love I'm from a city that's kind of known for 
you know, just being a little seedy. So anyway, yeah, it, I got a lot of fodder to work with. So <laughs> hey, hey, Frank, so he, he, he keeps typing stuff up. Frank, you know, you're part of the problem. Stop typing. Or the solution. Solution, depending on how you, know, you look at it. You know who <laughs> ends between the rolls on time? Frank does. Actually, does. a lot as I do, but he keeps bringing it. Yeah, well, he's half the reason why we're going. We went over. <laughs> All right. So, Bearded Oddfish Games, a.k.a. Kyle. Yes. Final thoughts. I actually know what David is talking about now, and I'm trying to... Re- remember where that came from but uh i'll have to do that later rogues they're amazing but at the same time they're just like one of those classes where you have to completely and ignore your mother on this you just (laughs) ignore the subclasses you strip it down to its features and you make it what it what you want it to be you know like i said i i like to brag about my medic uh you yes. should strip down thief uh, and all the other kind of characters that you can make just by stripping the car down and rebuilding up your amazing hot rod from it or a tricycle. I don't know how lame you want to be. Depending <gasps> on how you do it. <laughs> you know what they need though? They need the circus rogue. Oh, like an acrobat. An acrobat. The guy who throws yeah. a bunch of knives. That's what I want. Wizards of the Coast, Odd Fish Games, please use your leverage to get Wizards of the Coast to listen to me. Make the knife thrower row. The carny. The, the, oh, oh, oh my gosh, David, I love you. I, I would kiss you through this <laughs> camera if I could. Oh, that is the great. <laughs> the yeah, I'm gonna, I, will, I will actually tell you something off camera about acrobats. I believe. Oh, oh my. Oh. Coming in okay, the- so it was in <laughs> Vegas. She got really drunk. She went to Cirque du Soleil. No, 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 no. Went backstage. Said, Can you be an acrobat? <laughs> she said. Oh, Kyle, you know that other game I play? I believe they're creating uh, a, an acrobat uh, archetype. That's oh. about in their APG. Okay. But guys, um, let me just end on this one note, Carol, and I'm sorry I will let you uh, go on. In fact, I'm going to take away one of the things you should mention. But uh, guys, check out Oddfish Games. They do have the acid test. They're coming out with more books. Uh, They have the adventure sense. Honestly, guys, sense of smell is completely ignored when it comes to D&D adventures. And let me tell you about the new Oddfish Games adventure sense is going to make. It is called Hepatitis Carol Fence Post. Now, you may have heard about it on Thursdays, but now that I've mentioned it here as well, they have to do it, at least until I do it another time. Three times is the charm. Okay, Carol, you take it away, please. On screen, I want to find out about Hepatitis Carol because this was not Actually, it had nothing to do with you, but... (laughs) So, but honestly... Uh, all right, so Carol, take it away, Carol. So he did do the. This is why I ended with them because I knew he'd go into talk about Oddfish Games. So as for the rest, of course, follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, check out our YouTube archives because that's where all the old episodes are. Stop counting me down. I can see that. Uh, let's see. Of course, there's our Discord channel because you know we're there if you want to talk about gaming or whatever. We're there, uh, and of course, you can buy all our stuff. Not all our stuff. You can buy our stuff, our cool stuff, like the skirt. Uh, skirt. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Shirt and Scott. Skirt. All right, and skirt. producer, let's go ahead and cut this away. Back Remember, back enjoyed back our back bard. Back oh, the rolls. Uh, 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 yeah. Sorry, Carol wants to take it on for another 15 minutes. All right, Carol, go ahead. Shut it. All right, of course, if you want a seat at our table, either to join this discussion and have to deal with the likes of freaking Kyle, who will just... It'd actually be on our best behavior. (laughs) I'm Uh, sorry, Carol. I I am as excited as Dewey Docamel is when he's around Taryn. You know, I see Carol and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I get to play with (laughs) Carol tonight. She's going to bring so much good role playing into it and I can't help but be excited. And then it's like, oh my gosh, look at Scott. He has the hair and the beard and he talks about good things. And then there's David. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
I love David. Yeah, I was trying to mention all that, but somebody keeps interrupting. So yes, yeah, so you want a seat at this table or at one of our one shots. Uh, shoot an email to Murder Hobo Inc. at Gmail, I believe. Not and this Saturday, Saturday because it's the campaign. You let me finish it. All right. So yes, this Saturday. It is our campaign. Check it out. Uh, I said all the old episodes are in our archives. Uh, we might finally, we, the big missed questions are, of course, will we ever adventure together? Are we going to constantly split up the freaking party, which is probably not. Uh, will I ever get to role play for realsies? Um, <laughs> will we find Scooby's long lost father figure? Probably. Martha! I mean, or, or we, I'm pretty sure we're going to find him as some sort of an undead lich or something nasty in the catacombs. Don't do uh, that, Jim, it's very, I am very excited to play, and uh, I can't wait for Saturday. Campaign nights are always fun. So, so uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, have a lovely evening, and hopefully we'll see you on Saturday. And thank you, guys. Always, It's always fun. Always fun. Yeah, everybody wave!